understanding fine nuances of uh, artificial intelligence and its applications in ophthalmology. So uh, just a small introduction. AI is basically a field of computer science which deals with the development of intelligent machines which perform tasks that require human intelligence such as visual perception, speech recognition and decision making. It, uh, artificial of, uh, intelligence has improved accuracy in diagnosis, predicting disease progression and has assisted us in treatment planning. <clears throat> Popularly, AI algorithms uh, are being used in machine learning to analyze images such as retinal scans, OCT, and uh, we have been using algorithms to detect and classify diabetic retinopathy, ARMD, and glaucoma. Overall, it has improved patient outcome and has facilitated an early diagnosis and management in ophthalmology. Uh, image analysis in ophthalmology is in, uh, part of AI and has been widely used in glaucoma for diagnosis, progression in evaluation and preferred treatment selection, as well in retinal diseases uh, such as diabetic retinopathy, we just heard Dr. Prasanna about that, exudative and dry uh, age-related macular degeneration, geographic atrophy and retinal dystrophies. Then there's another thing called predictive modeling. Predictive modeling is uh, basically analyzing large data sets so that it can identify the risk factors and predict the likelihood of a patient uh, developing a certain eye disease. Artificial intelligence basically has uh, different uh, subfields such as machine learning, natural language processing, robotics, expert systems. Machine learning is basically developing algorithms that automatically learn patterns. So you just teach it once and then looking at the different uh, algorithm, different uh, images, it starts learning on its own, on its itself and it starts correlating the data among itself. And this is all done without programming the machine, without any program. So you just, as Dr. Prasanna has said, that you uh, tell the machine that, okay, this is a, a microaneurysm and this is a hemorrhage and this is new vascularization. So next time when the machine sees that thing, it can identify on its own and it can refine on its own. Uh, deep learning is again a subfield of machine learning and involves training artificial neural networks. Uh, it is something like our own uh, neuron, uh, neuron system as Dr. Prasanna has just said and uh, it is inspired by the structure and function of the human brain. It can learn to recognize pattern in large amounts of data by analyzing multiple layers of interconnected nodes. So it has a big similarity with the uh, neurons as the dendrites, they act as an input and then the cell body uh, analyzes the message, the chemicals and then sends the output. So similarly, there's an input involved which is being analyzed, whether it is true or false or it's okay or not okay and then the output is given. And similarly, you can have many such layers inside so basically, uh, deep refers to the depth of the network and may contain hidden uh, layers in it, allowing it to learn complex features. And also, not only learning complex features, but making a relationship between the data. And this has led to significant advancement in areas such as image and speech recognition, natural language processing, autonomous driving. Deep learning and diabetic retinopathy uh, as Dr. Prasanna said. So first of all, what you do is you collect large data sets, both of normal and uh, diabetic retinopathy cases. Then there's a pre-processing, you remove the noise, you adjust the brightness and contrast and the crop the region of interest and tell the uh, machine that this is in hemorrhage, this is a microaneurysm, this is hard exudates. So the training is done and algorithm is trained on a pre-processed image using a technique called CNN, Convolutional Neural Network. And it is a type of deep learning algorithm that can learn to recognize patterns in images. Then this model is then tested on a separate set of retinal images to evaluate performance in detecting diabetic retinopathy. The performance is measured in the terms of uh, sensitivity, specificity, accuracy, and area under receiver operating characteristics or ROC curve. 
So this uh, image has already been uh, explained by Dr. Prasanna, so I will not go into detail again. So you tell the machine that this is what is what and then next time the machine starts learning on its own. Uh, after all this has been done, then there is a step called clinical validation. The algorithm is validated in a clinical setting about the feasibility, safety and effectiveness. So this is just a flow chart. First of all, the image is captured, which is pre-processed and then analyzed by the uh, machine and disease grading is done and then treatment planning is done. Uh, image analysis and interpretation is of great value in OCT also. Uh, how it is does, it segments the different layers of the retina and this segmentation enables more accurate and objective measurements of retinal thickness, volume and other parameters that are critical for diagnosing and monitoring a ocular disease. So uh, with after this it can help us, uh, it can be trained to classify OCT images based on the specific feature pattern such as presence of uh, drusen in age related macular degeneration or presence of macular edema in uh, diabetic retinopathy. AI and image analysis interpretation, it can be trained to, uh, can be used to detect changes in OCT over a period of time in the terms of retinal thickness or volume and help clinician make uh, informed decisions about timing and type of intervention needed for each patient. It has a role in telemedicine as well. <clears throat> about the telemedicine, I'll come on later. Uh, predictive modeling in ophthalmology, it, it uses just, then there's a thing called predictive, predictive modeling or predictive model. It predicts what is going to happen next based on the logical points. So it uses statistical and machine learning techniques, predicts the likelihood or risk of developing ocular disease or its outcome, and it is based on patient-specific characteristics, environmental factors, and other variables. Uh, several predictive models have been developed to identify patients at high risk of developing glaucoma. And these models use variables such as age and family history, intraocular pressure and corneal thickness, optic nerve head appearance to estimate the likelihood of a particular patient developing a glaucoma over a period of time. And it can also help uh, in uh, identifying higher risk uh, patients who can develop glaucoma in future whereby the uh, clinician can provide early intervention and prevent a delay or vision loss. Uh, predictive modeling can, it has been used in diabetic retinopathy progression where it predicts the likelihood of diabetic retinopathy progression based on patient specific factors such as age, glycemic control and lipid levels, blood pressure. It helps clinicians to identify patients who are at a higher risk of developing vision threatening complications such as macular edema or proliferative diabetic retinopathy. And then the surgeon, uh, the clinician can provide timely intervention to prevent or delay vision loss. It has been used in uh, ARMD progression as well on the similar guidelines by identifying uh, variable factors. It has, uh, AI has been used in treatment planning. Uh, can help, AI can help uh, in treatment planning by providing personalized treatment recommendation based on patient unique characteristics and medical history and can help uh, determine optimal dosage of medication, appropriate time of performance. Uh, it has a very big role in telemedicine. Uh, it facilitates remote consultation and diagnosis by analyzing images and other data remotely and it can also uh, diagnose and treat, give treatment recommendations to patients who may not have access to specialists. It can assist ophthalmologists in making uh, clinical decisions by providing real-time feedback on management and identifying potential uh, side effects. It has, been it has helped in research and development by helping accelerate the discovery of new treatments and therapies by uh, analyzing large database and identifying the patterns in those data sets and help researchers identify new targets for drug development and optimizing clinical trials. It has certain limitations. Uh, there's a need for large and diverse data sets. Potential biases can be there in the data which is fed in the machine. So those biases can be carried forward. And of course, there are ethical considerations that like if something goes wrong, so who will be responsible, whether the AI will be responsible or the doctor will be responsible. Uh, 
Overall, AI in ophthalmology has the potential to improve patient outcome, increase the efficiency of healthcare delivery, but AI should not replace expertise and judgment of ophthalmologists. Rather, it should uh, serve as a tool to assist in diagnosis, prognosis, and treatment planning. Uh, in words of Stephen Hawking, intelligence is the ability to adapt to a change. Thank you very much for your patient listening. Thank you. Hello. Uh, thank you, Arun. Is there any anybody wants to have a question or Dr. Prasanna, you have to, any comments? Uh, th thank you, sir, uh, for this again wonderful presentation. Thanks. Uh, sir, what is your take on uh, bringing in the human interface into the AI, sir? Because the black box phenomenon is something that is well talked about and well debated. What is your take? I just wanted to know. Uh, uh, you mean to ask that uh, how can humans and AI work together, together. right? So, uh, there's still uh, areas, gray areas where AI, basically AI will depend on the data input. Yes, the sir. data which you give it, if the data is correct, so two things that you need to check the data which is being fed into the AI and then you need to validate the outcomes of AI. There need to be a person who has to check it. You just can't simply close your eyes and yeah. believe on AI. AI says, okay, this patient is going to progress faster. Uh, his cupping is going to progress faster on the various factors. But you need to keep a check. So that's where the humans come in. Where yes, you can't do without ophthalmologists. Yes, sir. And for the benefit of the attendees, as rightly pointed out by sir, on, in the court of law, again, it's a doctor that is uh, yes. involved, not the AI. So I think we all need to be very clear about that point that A will not save us in the court of law because it's the doctor behind the diagnosis and not the A behind the diagnosis. Right, very true. Yeah.